Vision based object classification using deep learning for inventory tracking in automated warehouse environment. The presentation is divided into five different parts problem statement, method overview, method description, evaluation and results, and lastly, Conclusion and future work. Typical jobs in warehouses are very labor intensive and have high risk of injury. Automation has the potential to improve the efficiency and throughput of operations while also lowering cost and increasing safety. In warehouse, it is necessary to identify incoming and outgoing items for keeping track of the inventory. Barcode and RFID tags are the traditional ways to identify items but both of them suffer from limitations. Barcodes easily get damaged and most barcode scanners require manual operation. RFID tags have limited lifetime. Both RFID tags and barcode scanners are costly. The objective of this research is to develop a deep learning based vision system to classify items in an automated warehouse environment. A vision based classifier takes as input an image from a 2D camera and predicts the item present in the image. This is illustrated in figure 3. The steps involved in the method are depicted in figure 4. The method consists of three steps, data preparation step, model training step and image prediction step. Each of these steps are described in detail in the following slides. Image prediction step uses a particular type of deep neural network called convolutional neural network or CNN in short. CNNs are efficient at image analysis and classification tasks. Their multi-layer hierarchical structure allows them to first learn low-level features, edges and corners in the case of an image, and then use those low-level features to learn more complex features. CNNs generally consist of two parts, convolutional layers and fully connected layers. The convolutional layers perform the task of feature extraction from the image and the fully connected layer use these extracted features to classify the image. Figure 5 shows the hierarchy of features in an image containing a human face. At the lowest level, we have hedges and corners using which more complex features such as human nose, human eyes, etc. are extracted. Further, these features are utilized to detect the presence of a human face. Our convolutional neural network utilizes a special type of network architecture called residual network or ResNet in short. Traditional convolutional neural networks pass the output of a layer as an input to the next layer. Residual networks add an additional skip connection between the two layers bypassing the non-linear transformation. Residual networks are easier to optimize compared to traditional CNNs. Their performance improve with increasing depth. A data set of 1427 images of 6 different categories of machine parts was created. These machine parts include a doughboard charger, doughboard gripper, doughboard pen holder, doughboard 3D printer nozzle, doughboard 3D printer extruder and doughboard suction cup. The training set consisted of 955 images and the test set consisted of 472 images. The images were taken from a 48 megapixel camera with GM1 sensor and f1.8 aperture lens in indoor conditions. The camera was mounted on a stand at a height of 40 cm and the objects were placed underneath it. The camera was connected to a computer with Intel Xeon CPU with Tesla K80 GPU and 12 GB of RAM. Experiments were also performed on the same computer. The model was implemented in Python using Keras. All six different categories of machine parts are shown in figure 7.
our data set consists of approximately 1.5 thousand images. The size of the data set is quite small. Deep neural networks require more data compared to other machine learning approaches. To increase the size of our data set, we utilize data augmentation. Augmenting an image data set can be done by multiple techniques such as affine image transformation, color modification, and even generative adversarial neural networks. Since the data set consists of only 955 training images, a combination of affine image transformations such as shift, rotation, zoom, and reflection, and color modifications such as contrast and brightness we utilize during the training to achieve better result. Figure 9 shows the result of application of affine image transformation and color modification. Transfer learning is the technique of utilizing knowledge gained while solving a problem to solve another related problem. Transfer learning has been proven to be efficient for classification problems when a large data set is not available or creating a large data set is difficult. There are two popular approaches for applying transfer learning on CNNs. The method proposed in this paper utilizes the fine-tuning approach. A ResNet 50 network pre-trained on ImageNet dataset is fine-tuned on the created dataset. Figure 10 gives an example of transfer learning. Learned weights from the task of predicting the presence of a dog in an image is utilized to solve a new task, predicting the, predicting the breed of the dog. The fully connected layers at the end of the pre-trained ResNet 50 were removed since the dataset has only 6 classes while the ImageNet has over 1000 classes. 4 new layers were added at the end of the model. Flattening layer, fully connected layer of 256 neurons with ReLU activation function followed by a dropout layer with probability of retaining set to 0.5 followed by a fully connected layer of 6 neurons with softmat or activation function. Figure 11 shows the newly added layers in detail. The input images were resized to the size of 224 cross 224. Categorical cross entropy was used as the loss function. Equation 1 shows categorical cross entropy. In equation 1, pi is the predicted probability of the image containing the ith object. And similarly, ti is the true probability of the image containing the ith object. A learning rate of 0 0.0001 was used with stochastic gradient descent as the optimizer. The model was trained for 30 epochs. Figure 12 shows the variation of loss function, namely categorical cross entropy during the training process. Two different experiments were conducted to evaluate the accuracy and speed of the proposed method. Before we move on to the experiment, let's first define the metrics involved. Three parameters were utilized to judge the performance of the solution. Accuracy, precision and recall. Accuracy is defined as the ratio of the number of correct prediction to the number of total predictions. Precision is defined as the ratio of the number of true positive results divided by the combined sum of the number of false positive results and the number of true positive results. Recall is defined as the ratio of number of true positive results divided by the combined sum of the number of true positive results and the number of false negative results. 472 images present in the test dataset were used to calculate these parameters. In the experiment, the accuracy of the model came out as 98.94%, approximately 99%, which is impressive given the small size of the datasets utilized. The recall and precision of the model were consistently above 90% for all the categories. Figure 15 shows the distribution of two positive and false positives for each class of the objects. Figure 16 shows the distribution of two positives and false negatives for each class of object.
based on the result of the experiment the confusion matrix was calculated the confusion matrix is given in figure 17 the confusion matrix is a table that allows visualization of the performance of a supervised learning algorithm each row of the matrix represents the instance in an actual class while each column represents the instances in a predicted class from the confusion matrix we could infer that the model seems to confuse between dobot charger dobot pen and dobot suction curve another experiment was conducted to evaluate the speed of the proposed method in this experiment average prediction time was defined as the mean of the prediction time the time taken by the model to generate a prediction on an image the average prediction time calculation is shown in equation 5 to calculate average prediction time per object category prediction on 150 test images 25 images per object were made and for each object category the mean of the prediction time was noted the results are shown in table 3 the average prediction time came out to be about the same for each object hence the speed of the method is independent of the object in the image the average prediction time over all the object categories was calculated as the mean of the prediction time over all images this came out to be 0 0.23 seconds Here, we list the advantages and disadvantages of the proposed method. The proposed method is robust to change in orientation and lighting condition of the environment. Further, it requires no calibration. Both these characteristics favor the algorithm, though the proposed method suffers from a limitation that any change in the inventory would require retraining of the model. Here is our proposed method in action. A small data set consisting of 11 images were chosen for this demonstration. Here are the images with the name of the object present in them. These 11 images were selected for this demonstration. The name of the object present in each image is given above them. So this image contains Dobot 3D printer extruder. This image contains a Dobot gripper. This image contains a dobot suction curve. Now, now we will pass this image into our model which we created in Python using Keras library. Then we will compare the predicted label on these images with the true with the true label. This will take some time. We have we have gotten our result. This is the name of the object the model thinks exists in the image. As we can see, yes, this is in fact a Dobot 3D print extruder. This is also correct a Dobot gripper. This is also correct a Dobot suction curve. In fact, the model has printed correctly all of these eleven images. So we have achieved hundred percent accuracy on these eleven images. In conclusion, the paper presented a vision-based method using convolutional neural networks to classify items for the purpose of inventory management in warehouses. The method worked on images taken from 2D cameras. It achieved a high accuracy of 98.94% on the dataset created by the authors consisting of 1450 plus images of machine parts by utilizing data augmentation and transfer learning. It ran at 4 frames per second making it suitable for other real-time applications as well. In the future, the method will be implemented on, on Dobot Magician, a robotic arm for practical training and education for the purpose of experimentation. 
more advanced deep learning frameworks such as mask rcnn will be employed to perform ta perform the task of classification localization and segmentation using a single network thank you